Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive game dev tutorial. In the previous lesson we learned how to code sound effects into our game and in this lesson we're going to learn how to create our own sound effects. I'm going to keep this video focused quite narrowly on the Mega Drive and its various hardware limitations and requirements. But of course once you've seen this video and you know what kind of sound effects the console can accept, you can then go ahead and search for more generalized advice on how to create sound effects, for example punching effects or sword effects or voice effects you can use your own voice or just objects around your house you can actually have quite a lot of fun creating these sound effects for yourself although of course there are some ready-made sound effects available if you search hard enough and of course you don't have to limit yourself to taking inspiration from existing games you can also uh, take sound effects advice from movies because of course movies have their own sound effects while Golden Axe 2 here had some rather pathetic death sound effects with the um, enemies just giving a very um, lackluster blur whenever they died, sounded more like they maybe ate something that didn't taste very good rather than getting hacked down with a sword. The first Golden Axe game of course is very famous, or I should say infamous, for taking um, sound effects from some 1980s Hollywood movies. A YouTube channel by the name of Sub Zero produces really interesting video highlighting where all these sound effects come from. I'll show you a short clip here and I recommend that after this video you go and watch that one just to see where all the sound effects come from because it's really fun to watch. While Sega did manage to get away with that back in the 80s, it's probably best to steer clear of anything to do with uh, Hollywood movies or, or music and just create your own ones, which is fun to do anyway. Recently, Yuzo Koshiro added some insight into how he created the voices for Streets of Rage. So he went through the original samples and apparently he actually created the voice for Blaze himself. He just had to change the um, pitch to sound more like a female voice. He also confirmed Axel does say ground upper when he does the uppercut move. I always thought it maybe it was Grand Upper or some people thought it said Grandpapa. It was quite difficult to hear on the Mega Drive hardware. Actually, for those of us who had a Mega CD back in the day, we did get to hear these very clear original sound effects because the Mega CD version, it was a pack in included with the console itself. You got, you know, Revenge of Shinobi and other games with it too. It did include the, use the uh, Mega CD sound effects. That said though, I have to admit that while the Mega CD sound effects were objectively better quality, there was a certain charm in the kind of uh, gravity, quietly staticky. Um, Mega Drive original sound effects. It made the um, sounds, I don't know, sound more gritty. In some ways, the Mega CD sound effects, both for that and for Revenge of Shinobi, for example, were a little bit too clear. Speaking of Mega CD sound effects, one of the people behind the Doom Resurrection on 32X, Victor Lukitz, did very kindly make available his sound driver for the Mega CD on GitHub, so I'll include a link there if you want to take a look. Thankfully, we're gradually getting more and more support for Mega CD and 32X stuff, so hopefully at some point in the future I can do a series of tutorials if anyone's interested. Okay, now let's get to work creating our own sound effects, and to do that I'm going to using the software program Audacity. It's a very popular and free to use piece of software, but if anyone has any other recommendations then please let me know in the comments below. Under audio setup I'm going to choose the microphone, because that's what I'm going to be using to record today, but if you want to use your PC, for example to record from YouTube or somewhere else, you can choose the speakers instead. We'll be covering what kind of files the Mega Drive can use the sound effects very shortly, but for now just use the default settings to record. So this will be a very high quality sample, which is good to have, just in case you want to use it in uh, modern PCs or consoles at some point in the future and not the Mega Drive. So by hitting the record button, you can then speak into your microphone or record off your computer. And once you're finished, simply hit the stop button and now press play to listen. Uh, ah, power fist. So those were my cheesy beat em up style sound effects. Uh, just in case you miss it, let's have another listen now. Uh, ah, power fist. Uh. We're going to continue with that audio file in a second, but before I do so, I just want to take you to this different audio recording I did, just to give you a technique that you can use that if there's some background noise when you're you made the recording, it's just a way to delete that background noise. So what you have to do is you have to highlight a certain section where you're not speaking or making any noise, go to effect and then choose noise reduction. Now in this pop-up box, click the get to noise profile button and that will disappear. And what Audacity has done there is just to get a profile of what the background noise sounds like so it can remove it from the rest of the re recording. 
To now remove that background noise, now that we've got the profile, simply Control A to select the entire recording, then go to Effect again and Noise Reduction yet again, and then this time simply press OK instead of Get Noise Profile because we've already had that done before. That should do a decent job of getting rid of any background noise, for example, traffic and so on. But to be honest, even with uh, traffic where I'm living here, it doesn't seem to affect the recording too much. But I thought I should show you this little technique before we move on, just in case you're having a bit more trouble with background noise where you're living. Okay, now let's go back to our previous example, my cheesy beat em up noises. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a selection, one of these, just to be our new sound effects. So you can highlight the piece that you want, simply copy and then open a new Audacity file and paste it into that. While it might not be the best death sound effect in the world, I think it's still a little bit better than the Golden Ass Blur anyway. Before we move on and change this so that it can work well with the Mega Drive, I first recommend that you save Project As, just so you can save this high quality version of the sound effect first. Okay, to make it more suitable for the Mega Drive, the first step, let's resample it. So Control A to select everything in the track and then select Resample, and we can change that to 16,000. Okay, the next step is to change the track from stereo to mono. So go tracks, mix, stereo down to mono, and that should be done. There are lots of various effects you can add to the recording. I'll let you do your own research on those. Maybe I'll do a more detailed tutorial later, but for now, let's look at the pitch to try and change it to a deeper or a higher voice. And as you can see, the change the pitch is very simple. You can simply move the, the little button to the left or to the right. Uh, the percentage change if it's zero, then it means it's the original. If it's a minus number, it means it's going to be deeper. And if it's a plus number, it means it's going to be more high pitched. Um, I tried the, the deeper ones work quite well, the high pitched ones. I don't really think it really sounds like a woman. It just sounds like very squeaky. So if anyone has any advice on how to turn that into like more of a, a woman's voice, like Yuko Koshiro did with uh, Streets of Rage Blaze, then let me know. In this case, I think the original recording sounds fine as it is, so let's not make any changes to the pitch. And now we're going to take the final step to convert this into something that the Mega Drive can easily use. To do that, we're going to go to File and then Export, and you want to export it as a WAV file. Call your sound effect whichever name you want, but the important thing is the encoding just below where it says Save as Type, make sure it says Unsigned 8-bit PCM. And with that done, we can simply take the file and import it into our SGDK project, just as we did in the previous lesson. And here is a project with that sound effect already uploaded, as well as three other sound effects. Now, two of these four sound effects are actually the same. The only difference is one of them's gone through that uh, conversion process that I detailed just a moment ago, and the other one hasn't, because um, actually, even if you don't go through that conversion process, if you take a, a, a high quality, it has to be a WAV file, but and it has to be relatively small, but even if it's still in uh, stereo and it's still in the wrong um, sample rate, SGDK does do something where it seems to convert some things automatically. Now, I thought it'd be a good idea to go through the conversion process just so you know how it works because I think maybe just uploading a, uh, you know, a stereo or a higher a rate um, sound effect might be a little bit dangerous. It might have some other effects I don't know about, so I thought I'd show you anyway. But sometimes you can get away with loading a high quality sound effect and SGDK, the uh, whole uh, resources system, it should convert it for you but it's kind of best to do it yourself just in case. That sound effect with the high quality and the Mega Drive version is a voice sample from Persona 4 Golden. If we listen to both the um, file that's gone through the process I mentioned before to change it more suitable for the Mega Drive and we listen to the original high quality sample you will hear that there's a, a difference in quality but once actually go into the um, Mega Drive ROM they turn out pretty much the same so let's go and listen to the original sound effects both the two Persona ones the Mega Drive conf converted one and the original file as well as the um, file we just created the uh, and also a fourth one, which I'm not sure if you recognize which modern game this one is from. Ooh, a rare one! Don't let it get away! Ooh, a rare one! Don't let it get away! Now let's play these sound effects in an emulator, just as we did in the previous lesson. You'll be able to hear that the two reset sound effects, even though 
the files themselves are different quality. Once you play them in the emulator, they actually and on the, on the actual hardware, they actually sound pretty much the same. Oh, a rare one! Don't let it get away. Oh, a rare one! Don't let it get away. So again, if you're feeling a little lazy, then you might be able to get away with just uploading the unconverted WAV file, but in general I recommend you go through the process that I'll highlighted in this lesson anyway. While SGDK will do a very good job with compressing these uh, rather large sound effect files to as small as possible, definitely try and make it so that the original file is as small as you can possibly make it by making it very short and uh, not so high quality. But um, SGDK, the um, XFGM2 driver, the new driver, sound driver, helps even more than this. It can, you can do even smaller sound effect files but um, for the moment we're just using the regular XGM uh, file here and you can see that the ROM size is actually quite small despite having these large sound effects on it. Before we finish the lesson I just want to cover one more very important thing and that is the sound volume of these sound effects. Now we, when we just recording our own sound effects normally that's a bit easier to control but especially when you're using sound effects from other sources sometimes they can be a bit too quiet which is often a problem for example with the lots of Castlevania Symphony of Night sound effects. I find that the ones I get to download are quite quiet and I have to make them much louder because you have to try and get a balance between the loudness of the music and all the sound effects in the game. It can be very hard to keep everything very consistent. If we listen to this Alucard Sword sound effect for example, we can hear it's very quiet. Unfortunately, there's no way to change the volume of a sound effect in SGDK within the code itself. So what we have to do instead is to change the volume beforehand in the actual original file within Audacity. To do this, make sure you've selected the whole um, sound effect and then go to Effect, go to Volume Compression, Amplify, and you can simply change the um, volume here. So pressing Preview will give you a preview of what the sound will sound like. And if you click Apply, then you actually apply that um, change to your file. It does seem to automatically give you the highest possible volume increase without distorting the sound itself. If you want to go higher than it recommends then you have to click allow clipping then you can go higher than that and you can preview and apply that to the sound effect. Please bear in mind that the reason that um, Audacity doesn't want you to do this is because it can result in some of the um, sound effect being cut off and the quality downgrading. So in general, I recommend not uh, selecting allow clipping. Just go to the highest it can possibly go without allowing clipping. But of course, how loud you want it depends on how loud the music is and how loud your game is in general. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you wish to support the channel further and want to get extra things, for example, the code for each lesson, then I have a patron and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time. Farewell.